New research suggests one in four women struggle to access period products, but there are so many ways that we can help change the statistic. Joining us now is the author of Periods Gone Public, Jennifer Weiss Wolf. Good morning. Hi, good morning. So it's good to see you again. I actually hosted an event with Jennifer last night called Menstrual Matters, Shining a Light on Period Poverty. Here's a couple shots from our evening. It was so inspiring to get so many um, thought provokers in the room, you being one of them, being an author. Let's explain to the people what is period poverty. I think this is really surprising for people to learn, but when you, it, it actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it. It's very simple. The inability to afford or access menstrual products when somebody needs them actually can inhibit people from being able to participate fully in society, yeah. in the ability to go to school, the ability to go to work. And when I heard this, you, I always think of something like this in a developing country, but it's happening here in the United States, the richest country, one of the richest countries here in our world. Yeah, I mean, poverty is not a secret in this country, yeah. and period poverty, or poverty related, you, you know, that, that spurs from from the inability to afford menstrual products, it's it's a serious thing. Yeah. It's a really serious thing. And for people who might not fully understand it, it affects people um, in terms of women and girls being able to go to work, to go to school, and be active members of society. How are you working to change this on the national level? So it's. It's been actually a remarkable political and policy agenda. The idea that menstrual products should be made affordable and available to those who need them has taken off in states, cities, even in the federal government, um, all across the country uh, for the past several years. Here, here in Illinois, actually, uh, the state has been a leader, um, eliminating the sales tax on menstrual products in 2016 and passing legislation to make sure that they're provided in schools. Yeah, well, tell us about your book, um, author of Periods Gone Public. What's this book about? Periods Gone Public. They've gone public. So I wrote this book in 2017 to talk about this political and policy movement that was willing to, one, talk about menstruation, two, really make steps to destigmatize it, and three, pass legislation that ensures that our needs are fully accounted for um, in our laws. Uh, and, and in society. And the yeah. book actually comes out in paperback in a couple weeks, so this is really good timing. And something that was so cool that we discussed last night, we actually talked about how Illinois is somewhat progressive in this matter. There's still a lot of work to be done, but what are some of the things that um, you, we are, I guess, kind of happy to have done as, as voters? So like I said, Illinois was one of the first states to eliminate the tampon tax, which mm -hmm. is sales tax on menstrual products. That was back in 2016, um, Back right? in 2016, yeah. And there's been legislation passed since then to require menstrual products in schools. Um, there's still work to do. I mean, a lot of states have passed laws that require um, that menstruation be accounted for for people who are incarcerated, so Illinois needs to catch up there. Wow. Um, and, and to uh, ensure that people who are using emergency shelters or other, other public services also have access to menstrual products. So what kind of action do you feel like people watching at home can do today to try to help this problem? Well, we talked about that last night and donating to local collection drives and ensuring these products get into the, you know, to the hands of people who need them and there are plenty of those that people can find locally. But really, I mean, my, my rallying cry is call your legislators, make them make this a public and policy issue. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And uh, we said let's also not diminish, as you just mentioned, some of those grassroots efforts, uh, some of the smaller things. Like you said, you're donating food usually, especially around the holidays. A lot of people are donating food to these shelters to be able to take the opportunity in schools as well. And that's not small. I mean, that's that's not small. Every, every, every step matters. Yeah. And in fact, sometimes when you're, you know, right one-on-one -on -one with people, you're making the biggest impact. Yeah, there we go. All right, Jennifer, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank so you glad for being to be here. here. I know an early morning for you after we had an <laughs> evening last night. Okay, you can order her book. It's Periods Gone Public on Amazon. And if you do want to help, just head to That's the Letter U by Kotex.com. You can donate between June 1st and June 30th, and they're going to make a donation um, on your behalf if you're buying uh, Kotex there.